My name is Fred Andersky. I'm with Bendix Commercial Vehicle Systems. I have my Class A commercial driver's license and I drive a lot of the demos of our technology. And the technology I'm going to talk about today is collision mitigation technology. And what I want to be able to do in this talk with you is to give you an idea of what the system does, what the technology does, but more importantly, what you're going to experience if you have technology like this on your vehicle and talk about some of the issues and stuff that you may have it and, and how those are going to get fixed in the future. Okay? Um, we'll have some time for questions and stuff. So, uh, you know, if you've got the technology and you're thinking about the tech or you're thinking about the technology, let's talk about it. So, what is collision mitigation technology to start off with? Okay, this is the rear end collision mitigation technology. It usually involves a radar sitting on the front uh, of your bumper or a radar on the bumper and a camera in the windshield. And what it's designed to do is to help you avoid rear-ending a vehicle, okay? It combines two features. It combines adaptive cruise control with braking and collision mitigation braking. We'll talk a little bit about what, uh, what that info is. One of the things I want to point out is, as far as collision mitigation technology goes, there are different systems that exist out there. So it's good to know what you have on your vehicle, okay? And these different systems offer different features to help you out, but it's good to know what those features are so when something happens, you suddenly don't get shocked uh, by what occurs. So we have actually two systems in the marketplace. We have what we call our Wingman Advanced System, which utilizes just a radar, and then we also have our Fusion System, which utilizes a radar and a camera in the windshield. So if you take a look at any of the Peterbilt or Kenworths or even the Max and Navistars that are here, you'll see one of these two technologies. Now our competition also has um, radar-based technology that's collision mitigation. Um, so there's multiple systems that are available out there. So the differences we see between our systems is first of all, when it comes to stationary vehicles in your lane of travel, uh, what can happen is, obviously, if it, it's there, come up on it fast. A lot of times that's one of those bad crash situations we don't like. But the Wingman Advanced System with radar only, we provide only a warning on that. You get up to a three-second heads up, what we call a stationary object alert. And what that stationary object alert does, and it's very useful, lets you know that there's something in your, in your way there. Um, and it gives you a chance to either to brake or to steer to avoid it. Now, if you steer to avoid something, the collision mitigation technology is built on stability control. So uh, stability control helps with loss of control and rollover situations, because this is a big question that comes up. Hey, what if this system breaks while I'm on snow or ice? Well, if it does that, stability kicks in to help you keep going the way you want to be going. Okay, that's why we build it on top of stability. Now, the fusion system, because we have a camera that works with the radar, that's more information into the system. So when you sit back and you think about it, um, when you make a decision, isn't it better to have more than one source of information? And that's exactly what we're doing. Radar sees the object, camera, camera verifies what the object is, and that allows us to provide braking on stationary vehicles with less false alerts, less false interventions. Believe it or not, these two systems, we provide the same amount of braking power. We use about two-thirds of the braking power on the tractor, which gives you the opportunity to add more, and we also brake the trailer. But the way we brake the trailer is not electronically, we actually pulse air to the back, because trailers last forever in this industry. Any of you guys have a trailer that doesn't have ABS on it? There you go. That's a classic trailer. Um, but because we don't know that it's got ABS, we can't afford to give you 100% of the braking power. So we pulse the air back. So on your trailer, we'll simulate ABS, um, but still be able to help you out. Um, that means um, we, because we get more information in the system, we can scrub off more speed uh, in a situation like when you're coming up on a vehicle that's going slower than you are. So our Wingman Advanced system will scrub off up to about 25 miles an hour. Our Wingman Fusion system will scrub up to 35, 
and our next generation system will scrub up to 50. The difference between the first generation and the next generation, we now apply all the braking power on the tractor in the second generation system. So that enables us to take more speed off. So when you think about it, you're cruising down the highway 65, 70 miles an hour, and you come up on a vehicle that's going 25 or 30 miles an hour, that system's gonna intervene uh, to help, it is gonna alert you first, intervene to slow you down, and then if you decide to move around that vehicle, you can do that. Um, and this system is gonna be out probably later this year, last quarter, maybe first quarter of next year. But the reason why I bring it up is because you could have trucks out there that you use that have multiple systems. And so again, you'll see we have some features on Fusion that we don't have on Advanced, and then we also have features on Fusion 2 that we don't have on Fusion 1. Let's talk about what you can expect in terms of alerts, all right? Now, the goal of the system is not to inundate you with alerts. You guys remember the old VORAD system? We used to call it the bridge detection system. We own VORAD, so I can say this. But every time you'd go under a bridge, it would alert, let you know, hey, we're going under a bridge. You know? It was amazing how people found ways to disable that system. You know, the magic rock that found its way to cut the wire, things like that. We've done a lot since those days to improve the algorithms to reduce the number of uh, false alerts and such that you get, but we'll talk about that in just a bit. So on all of our systems, you will get three alert, you'll get three different types of alerts. Most important alert is the impact alert. This is available at 15 miles an hour, and on our driver interface unit, it looks like this. You get a loud sound as well as three red bars and it says requires driver intervention. The reason why we do that um, is because that's to let you know that a half second later if you don't do something we're going to apply the brakes and so we do collision mitigation braking automatically. Now this happens usually within about a second or so time to collision. So you're gonna be close. So it's designed really to get your attention with the alert, allow you to apply additional braking or steer to avoid the situation. Stationary object alert, again, available on all systems above 10 miles per hour. This is if you've got a large metallic object of size in the lane in front of you. Um, washing machines, uh, you know, things like that, that uh, people dump up, drop off their cars in the middle of your lane. With stationary object alert, we do not do any braking. We give you an alert. If in the case of a fusion system, that stationary object is a vehicle, we then do the impact alert, give you the collision mitigation braking. Following distance alerts. Following distance alerts are part of both the adaptive cruise control and the collision mitigation technology. Following distance alerts let you know as the gap between you and a forward vehicle is closing. And so in the Bendix system, above 37 miles an hour, we'll give you typically three alerts. Think of it as a close, closer, closest alert. Gives you the opportunity to be able to do something um, before you get too close in that situation. With adaptive cruise control on, okay, so if we do have ACC on, with ACC, we will do three things. We'll either cut the throttle. Everyone can read this, right? <laughs> Otherwise, we will use the engine brake. Or if necessary, we will apply the brakes. And again, this is when you're in cruise control. The reason why we do that is the system is trying to help you maintain that following distance behind a vehicle. So you're, you're running adaptive cruise control, right? Yeah, so you've probably experienced that where it, it helps to keep you back. Um, you can still override uh, in terms of that, just accelerating or getting other, other lane or just go ahead and applying brake. The last alert is what we call speed sign recognition. And again, this is only with a fusion system. So again, you're looking for a radar in the front of the vehicle and a camera that looks like this in the windshield. If you have those two things, 
you have a fusion system. So you get all these alerts, plus you get what we call speed sign recognition, um, which takes a look at the, tra uh, the speed limit sign. And if you're going five miles an hour or over, it gives you an alert. 10 miles an hour or more over, gives you alert and a one second dethrottle. We do not break on overspeed alert. We do a one second dethrottle as a haptic alert because you may be distracted or you may not um, uh, hear the alert. That one second dethrottle helps to get your attention. Um, the other alert that we do that I don't have here is lane departure warning. Again, because we have a camera, we can read the lines in the road. So if you veer out of the lane without using your turn signal, we will give you a rumble strip alert, either right side or left side uh, to come in. If you use your turn signal, that alert is suppressed. So one of the things I wanted to point out is Different vehicles have different looks for their alerts, for the human-machine interface, as we call it. So this is the Bendix. This is an, uh, an impact alert. This is the Bendix. Hey, we're telling you we're going to, uh, we want you to intervene. And then we tell you we're applying the brakes. Um, on a Volvo, that alert has a message that says requires driver intervention. And then you get red symbols around the speedometer and such. On a Packard vehicle, Packard uh, flashes red. Again, you get an audible sound, and they give you a red, and it says break, okay? Which is typically a good suggestion, unless it's better to steer, all right? So again, control is back with you, the driver, and even our competition um, does things a little bit differently. So when you look in your, when you get into your vehicle, and if you if move between vehicles, take a look. Does it have this um, or does it not have this? Does it have this or does it not have this? Because if it doesn't have these in there, you're going to be getting the alerts through the dash. And on the Wingman Advanced System, uh, all the OEMs are showing them through the dash. On the Wingman Fusion System, dash and the driver interface unit. And I won't talk about the competition. <laughs> well, we can. So let's take a second and talk about false alerts. Do you have problems with false alerts? Once in a while. Once in a while? OK. So what causes a false alert is the radar is looking for a metallic object. OK? And radar is really good at finding metallic objects, figuring out if those objects are moving, and how far we are from the object. But what radar can't do is figure out what the object is. Is it a car? Is it a washing machine? Uh, is it a 12-pack of Canada Dry Ginger Ale? Um, and believe it or not, we have seen false interventions on 12-packs of Canada Dry in, uh, Ginger Ale. Uh, we haven't seen it on Coke or anything, but we haven't tested it. so. Just be aware of that. So what happens is the radar sends out a signal about 500 or 600 foot in front, um, and it's looking for things. You can run into the situation where you may be up on a hill coming down, and there's a bridge overpass with a sign, and the radar may pick it up and give you an alert. Okay? This is why in our system, we only give you a stationary object alert. The competitive systems will break on stationary objects. So you may get an alert and a brake intervention. And we've seen a lot of issues with the radar-only systems, um, not so much ours because we don't brake on a stationary object, but the competitive systems where braking occurs when it's not needed. So one of the ways to remedy that, we've improved the algorithms a lot, so we look for moving vehicles and things like that. But by adding the camera, we again can verify what's going on. Radar sees an object, we verify it's a car, we need to know, we need to do something. We see an object, we can't verify it's a car with the camera, we give you an alert instead of an intervention. So that's what makes things different. So to wrap this up, um, it is a rough road out there, but these systems can help. You know, in 2015, FMCSA uh, found that for every 15, every 15 minutes, a large truck in this country rear-ends a passenger vehicle. Okay, so we've got over 40,000 of those rear-enders that occur. 
Fleets who have added or owner operators who have worked with collision mitigation systems um, have typically found a reduction of anywhere from 70 to 90 percent in the number of rear end collisions that they're seeing, but also a reduction in the severity of the ones that still occur. Again, we're trying to take energy out before the potential collision. Please don't test the system, okay? You get the new truck and you've got this new system on it and you wanna just zip right up behind somebody, don't test it. Um, it will work, but there are limits, okay? Uh, and laws of physics do intervene. It's not autopilot. Again, there is nothing that is driverless available out there today uh, in the industry. You see testing of things, but they're not available. We call our system Wingman because it's there to assist you. Different systems de differ different alerts. So know what you've got on your truck and what it is you can expect, okay? And training tools are available. Use them, ask questions. If you need more information, check out our websites, either safertrucks.com or bendix.com. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.